the deposits of the third Reich. Thousands of hectares, hundreds of secrets. The task of researchers is to doubt and ask questions. Nazi riddles. Krzysztof Spakowski and his guests are looking for the answers in his series. It's not easy to be an explorer and a researcher in the old mountains. First of all, because of complicated and ambiguous regulations. Secondly, their interpretation of officials. In this episode, we will show you how their exploration in Wodaj looked like. It was done with clockwork precision and conservatives. At times, it tends to be very play safe. But the truth is that these are realities. According to agreements with state forest, I am obligated to inform a forester, the local administrator, about my actions. We are going to explore next to Wodash, 500 meters to one side and 700 meters to the other side. Non-invasive exploration. We use only the textures and inspections camera. Due to the decision, we are not going to dig. We are going to mark our places with some signal by stakes. Then we are sending results to a conservator. Please tell me, what will happen if we find something? Anything, some scrap, metal or spade? What we should do then? Then it's good to inform the forestry authorities. They are host of this area. So it should be done not to have any problems. That's what I'm going to do. I really care about good cooperation here. So, if we find something, we will take photos of it and inform the authorities. If there are all of the documents and permission, then there is no problem. Yes, we have got the permission. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. I am glad that you have arrived in great numbers. There is a response. Warsaw, Wrocław and Łódź. All of you have signed contracts. This help in verification research is a voluntary work. We will carry out this exploration here in the area of Wodaż, precisely block A, B and D. These blocks which are finished adjoin the one open for public. We know a lot, because there was a lot of research carried out before. We have never confirmed the presence of railway tracks by using detectors. You mainly own metal detectors, so there will be an opportunity to confirm that. What are we going to look for? We are going to look for railway trucks. It's a shadowing filter put on GeoPortal. Perfect tool. It can be precisely seen how did these trucks and siding look like. What do we know? We know that there were corridors. Germans were building them next to so-called Portes Lodges. There are many forts like that, especially close to these Portes Lodges and mine shafts. We have been cleaning the area of a shaft, and it has turned out that the corridor goes in the direction of Block D. So it's not a coincidence. We know exactly how Germans were building. They were constructing each building individually. After finishing them, they were connected from inside. That is why no one could ever confirm how did it look like. Neither witnesses, nor workers, or prisoners. So we have got lots of work, and I underline one more time. We do not dig. There is a decision and permission for exploring, marking, finding and non-invasive researching. All of the places which would look suspicious and would have any signal, you should mark with a red stake. If the signal is weak, you should use yellow stake. Later, we will hand over our results to the conservator. Our safety is guaranteed by the company Kataklis Rescue. If there are any questions or doubts, we have a colleague here who is an archaeologist. He is at our disposal. In the meantime, we are going to work with a ground penetrating radar. We also have a camera. If you find any drainages or cracks which you consider worthy examining, then we will contact by radio. We'll go there and check it immediately. Uh, 
We have found a drainage. Maybe we could check it with an inspection camera. In this pipe possible? We will manage to put the camera there. Just a moment we will check. It should get into easily. If the water goes out, the water and camera will also do. Okay, so we take a camera and we will reach you. We have finished the exploration and its results are really interesting. We have more than 100 marketplaces. A situation is a little bit paranoid because we have got the equipment, staff, historian, archaeologist, medical care and pyrotechnic protection, but we can't dig. This is how it works. These are conservators' actions. Thank you very much. We will, of course, hand over all of our results to the conservator. We have then right to dig out our find and see what is there. If you want to get to know the history of this place better, or the truth about the wars here during the Second World War, we have to explore this area. We have to discover it, because each single thing which we can dig up is an evidence of a history. It can tell us a lot. Well, it won't tell us anything. If it's stuck in the ground, everything is a little bit tangled. A lot of located signals. These can be parts of railway tracks or just some nails. That kind of things should be mined out, preserved and displayed. Yes, especially while we have a museum, so people could see it. These are tiny puzzles, which create the hole. We can deduce the way of trucks, the location of warehouses, etc. As explorers, we don't feel the support and help of a conservator, but on the contrary, it looks like a little war. We do something, and then the prosecutor get interested in our actions. We don't understand why, because we haven't mined anything, we haven't appropriated anything, and we haven't got anything at home. In my case, I registered an object which is underground in 2050. I found it by means of dowsing. During the registration, I hired a company with ground penetrating radar. This company confirmed my dowsing research. It turned out that my results are true and effective. A notification from the prosecutor's office arrived immediately. Till today I don't understand what kind of crime I committed. If it really looked like that, then charges were illegal. Cases are already dismissed and it proves that they were groundless. Anyway, for me, the attitude of a conservator is incomprehensible. Another situation was when I get a permission to dig up an entrance to the drift. It was divided into three stages. According to the decision, I could use a backhoe loader and a heavy loaded truck in order to get to the beginning of the drift. We were to access if there is a cave in or not and later more decisions were to be taken in terms of procedures. However, we have never even started the stage number three, because when we reached the wall, which was probably the remain of the Second World War, this wall tilted. I finished the first stage. The starost of object, who saw the situation on his own eyes, made a decision to knock down the wall because it's dangerous. I didn't make a decision, a starost did. But there is another charge in the prosecutor's office, that I have destroyed something. Conservator's decision aren't any kind of help or coordination, but something totally the opposite. I know this story. I was observing the situation carefully. I didn't see an inviolation. The wall you told us about was dangerous for people, and there had to be such decision. It was the starost who made the decision, not you. The wall was knocked down. There wasn't any monument's destruction. 
especially because of the fact that we don't know when was the wall built. There are some premises that it was constructed many years after war. That's why I don't understand it. You had a very similar situation. Maybe you can tell us. It's a police raid at 6 a.m., knocking on door, officers rushing inside the house screaming, police! Have you got any monuments? That was my case. The police rushed in, secured some things. The rest of them they gave back. If they treat it as a monument, then why they only keep coins which are transparent and bottles? Why there are such limitations? If we decide that one coin is a monument, then why the destroyed coin is given back and the nice one is taken? Because there is more work. Okay, but if this is a monument, then we should keep an eye on it. It should be protected and shown in the museum. Currently, the law is so strangely constructed that the main aim is to hinder the work of explorers. In my opinion, in Poland, the interpretation of law is quite free. More powerful person would interpret regulations freely. The real passionate won't be afraid of a police raids at 6 o'clock in the morning. He will continue his passion, and that's why it is so positive. What are you accused of by the prosecutor's office and the police? Even digging up graves? Did you do it? No, never. So, why are you accused of it? Because you have got buttons. We have also found a helmet. It was buried and there were camp shelves buried next to it. When soldiers were running away, they were taking helms off and burying them. You are an expert. Why does it look like that? I don't hinder it. It's an open place, public. So you can come and see it. So why is it like that? I suppose that it can be explained by lack of willingnesses to act. I think something should be done to change this law and help people who want to discover the history. What can be changed in this situation? How we should fight with Claire's conservatives? There were many talks and meetings which were supposed to help all of these researchers. The aim was to carry out all of the research and wars with conservators and museums. However, there have always been some ambiguities. There have always been some elements which have been blocking these conversations and then they have been broken off. There is a group of people who claim that explorers without the appropriate training and education, but only with the equipment, shouldn't act freely. I'm not going to give up. Of course, I don't like it. This is even said. I was one of the founders of RISA Association and the museum because of the fact that I didn't want to give up. I wanted to civilize it and make it functional. A modern ground penetrating radar was also used as part of research carried out in Wodash Mountain. Red lines are tapes which were visible along. The green one at the top is the width of research and supposed depth. We know that the building is constructed consequently to these already existing ones. So, more or less, we know how deep we should search below 20 meters. This solid shows us which part of the area we examine. And here we have got an interference without any processing. It can be seen that the signal is really strong. Later, we turn on 3D and we can see here an anomaly, which is quite regular and something is above it. It can be just a reflection, but it can be also a technological color. While we know that when Germans were building these drifts, they were always constructing with them a technological color. I would rather suggest it's a reflection. 
Undoubtedly, there is no such distinct outline as here is. While here, we can see it from the bottom that is open on both sides. The highest is visible as well and is very probable. Idzie wyraźnie na przestrzeń. Widać, widać tutaj wysokość jest też bardzo the results of research with meticulously prepared documentation were immediately handed over to the conservation officer by Krzysztof Szpakowski. Problems of a history researcher from Ludwikowice Kłoskie in discovering secrets or troubles of explorers from the central Poland are unfortunately not the rare ones. The discoverers of Nazi gold train had the wrestle with critical procedures and regulations interpretation. Let's remind. Do you think that these obstacles that you meet might suggest that someone really doesn't want the train to be taken out? Or that you wouldn't take it out? Yes, I think so. If I heard from others how Tadeusz Sowikowski was trying hard to take this train out and he didn't manage, then I think yes. He heard continuously stop and he wasn't as close as we are. But we are lucky now. That's how Polish politics looks like. If PO, civic platform, the Polish ruling party would still have power, then it would be the end. Krzysztof Szpakowski had also a conversation about the regulations, their interpretation, new arrangements and decisions with a vice starost of Powiat Wabrze, Powiat, second level of local government administration in Poland. Let's remind that the decision about knowing down the wall was made by Krzysztof Kwiatkowski. It took place during an absence of Krzysztof Szpakowski, who was trying in the meantime to transport the steel gate. It's even more suspicious because of the fact that the conservation officer charged Krzysztof Szpakowski with responsibility. The interpretation of law about findings is clear. In order to register the finding, you have to show us physically the objects you have found. If you conduct another non-invasive verification by means of various methods which confirm something, then unfortunately I have my hands tied. Przy użyciu różnych metod, które potwierdzają coś, no to niestety ja znowu jestem... From the formal side of you, you have to show us the object. So we have to go inside, or you have to show us the monuments detected by your equipment. But you can't show it to us, because you don't have a permission to touch the ground. So the situation is at least peculiar. I don't quite understand how should I behave in this situation. I will of course ask a conservation officer to give an opinion in this case. While if you indeed found something underground and these things may comply with the requirements of law. Then it should be secured. Now you have got the situation that you have put stakes all over the area. So just random people can illegally take these things because I don't know how formally we could secure it. That is why I reserve that I don't take any responsibility because I'm not going to cover the cost. I think that the conservators should protect monuments, not hinder the work of explorers or representatives of the local government. This law was prepared to give the opportunity to discover these things and secure them. So people as you, I could conduct their research legally. I commit myself to talk with a conservator to give his opinion in this case. This statement cannot continue any longer. Please try to understand me. I am accused of having fun in the field of discoveries. Even my opposition requires dismissing me from the position because of the fact that I am doing with you some research in the old mountains. The truth is, we haven't discussed covered anything yet. I really want you to find something, to do it together, so finally, as Wałbrzych Vice Starost, I could show that underground there are Nazi secrets connected with work carried out by Nazi Germany. Especially because it has an influence on the tourist traffic. Yes, of course. 
Vaubjeg and the Owl Mountains have never been so advertised and popular. Unfortunately, the conservator disturbs us in spite of helping. For me, these situations are incomprehensible. I was twice at the prosecutor's office and I still don't know why. How can you discover anything if it's forbidden to look for it? What does the conservator say? I don't know. After the situation in Javornik, I received the right to rebuild this wall, and I have to cover this area again. I don't know with what. With rubbish? Rubbish was stored there for 70 years. It's incomprehensible for me. A conservator hasn't seen this entrance till today. He couldn't see it before, because it was buried. After I secured this door, as you required, they are still there. A conservator didn't arrive to see it. For me, the situation is at least strange, because according to your permission, it was clear that you were to discover drift entrance. The definition was precise and understandable rather for everyone who can think logically. I was there on spot and I didn't notice any entrance to the drift. So in my opinion, these wars in Javornik should be continued in order to discover such entrance, in order to open the door described by witnesses who came from Germany. If you tell me today the conservator's decision is to hide it and discontinue works, then what it can be? I appeal to this decision. For me, it seems to be a really peculiar situation. I don't feel guilty at all. I acted due to decision and in accordance with directives. I have also acted above all to protect the business. This situation with the wall, called the historic one, is at least strange. Another strange situation for me is that it's interpreted according to article number three. It is said it's an element of historical value. I would like to see an assessment of this historic value. Did anyone prepare the documentation and register it? It is a monument? If we think the way the conservators do, then soon it will be forbidden even the dig foundations of own house, because we will have to hire an archaeologist and get a permission. Coming back to Javor. A conservation officer was informed, invited, he was supposed to come, but he didn't. Recently, I have been informing twice about my research plan for coming days. I will be marking out railway tracks by means of metal detectors or a ground penetrating radar. So, non-invasive exploration. Once more, he was informed and he didn't arrive. He only arrives when everything is ready and he immediately informs the prosecutor. This is his role. I also have such feeling that the conservator doesn't come because he will have to make a decision and he doesn't want to do that. He is afraid of deciding. This situation is really ambiguous for me. Because if you are a guard of such important values as history, you must make difficult decisions. It's strange that there is a permission to enter the drift, but the conservator is absent. He should verify it if some objects are historic or not. I hope you will receive appropriate permissions. Unfortunately, you have to fight for it. You also have to take care of your own business. You are working really hard, long-standing hobby, collecting materials and hints, and then you will stay with nothing. Hmm. Only because of the fact that the official, who should be on guard, is blocking any further actions. I think we will ask the minister to verify work of a conservator's office in terms of this issue.
This is a document of a conservation officer from Wałbrzy demanding from Krzysztof Spakowski to rebuild the wall. It surprises, especially because previously the same official had given a permission for invasive research. A history researcher from Ludwikowice Kłoskie had no other choice but to appeal against this decision. In this episode, you have seen how little can be done because of decisions which we get. I encourage you to see the next episode where we will present a story of Jan Latinski, still living prisoner. When he saw first episodes, he found contact, come here and told us the whole story. His war story began precisely here, in the town Obernhasdorf, exactly during the same season. He was sent here to work for a German farmer and the little innocent adventure was acknowledged as a huge crime and that's how his Gehenna started. But we will say about it in the next episode. Thank you for your attention.